Well, some interesting developments taking place out at Sylvan Lake. And to give us an insight as to um, a goldfish problem, surprise, surprise, and a storm pond, a uh, real pleasure to welcome uh, Jay White. He is the uh, owner and uh, principal of Equality Environmental Consulting. Jay, thanks so much for spending some time with us uh, on a, what looks like a beautiful day in Sylvan Lake. It's a stunning day at Sylvan Lake. I guess 21 degrees out today. It's lovely. All right, so let's talk about that storm pond that's behind you. I know that the uh, the town of of uh, Sylvan Lake has been dealing with a goldfish issue for some time, and uh, they finally have pulled the plug, brought you in, and what are you going to be doing? Yeah, so previous efforts have included doing some electroshocking, drawing the stormwater pond down, freezing, and then they took out over 160 tandem loads of dirt out of here, sediment in the fall. Uh, and to their surprise, after collecting probably 500 or so fish last fall, they were hoping they'd be it would be gone. And surprise, surprise, they came back this spring and there were still invasive fish in here. So uh, we've decided to go with a rote known treatment. And so we've been planning since April of this year. And today's the day that we're actually going to be doing the application. So the, the fellas doing the, the piscicide work have just fired up their machinery there. You might see them in the background in there yellow suits and they're going to be applying rope known here today and uh, we should be seeing some dead fish in the next hour or so but certainly uh by tomorrow uh, we should have all of the fish in here uh killed all right we'll talk a little bit about the chemical that's being used and and i guess more importantly i mean you're literally on the doorstep to sylvan lake um talk about how the safety measures are in place to ensure that uh, this chemical doesn't reach the main body. Yeah, you bet. So we're using a chemical called rotenone, which is a actually it's a, a bean plant, jicama plant derivative from the roots. And uh, Native South Americans have been using it to catch fish for hundreds of years. And we use it as, a, as an approved piscicide. It is difficult to acquire these days, but the town of Sylvan Lake was able to get some from the Atlantic Salmon Foundation recently. And we've done a deleterious substances application with Alberta Environment and Parks, as well as a, a specialized fish research license to be able to do this removal today with Alberta Environment and Parks uh, Fisheries Department as well out of Red Deer. So regulatory wise, that's all been looked after. We've got culvert blocking the outflow of this water course here. And then we're gonna have sentinel fish inside live traps uh, for the removal itself to make sure that they're all dead first. And then after the treatment in a week or two weeks or three weeks, we want to be measuring the, the chemical drops back down to two parts per billion, and then we'll be able to release this water. So all of the inflows coming into this pond have been treated, were treated this morning, and then there's a block on the outflow of this pond and uh, everything inside this, wa this water will all be held until that background concentration has been reached. So we have to send the uh, Twice every every second day, we have to send water samples off to the lab to, to just to monitor the degradation of this. And with warm, sunny weather like this, we can anticipate that that compound will degrade pretty rapidly. So it might even be just a week uh, that it's around before we can release the water out of here. Uh, you you kind of alluded to it, Jay, but uh, obviously a lot of steps need to be a lot of boxes need to be checked off, and there's very few folks in the province uh, that are allowed to use this chemical uh, because of its potency. I mean, you don't want to see this going into a, uh, a major body of water or a river or a creek that it's not intended to be there. No, that's absolutely true. So lots of measures have been put into place to make sure that the chemical that's being used today is staying in, in this pond and not going any further than here. And Obviously, regulatory wise, we're not allowed to release the water out of this pond until that background level has been reached. And this compound does degrade pretty quickly in organic systems like this. There's a lot of things that are breaking it down, but sunshine, sunlight, UV is the biggest thing that breaks it down. So I would anticipate, you know, within 48 hours, it'll be breaking. I think it's half life in, in at 21 degrees is about four days. So in four days, it should be half of its potency and then another four days again, it'll just continue to half down. Jay, I know you've done so much work, uh, especially when it comes to Arctic grayling and some of the um, 
some of the streams uh, in in central uh, uh, Alberta. Um, it, it's it's got to frustrate you. I know it does a lot of folks when we see these invasive species. Um, and it, it's so easy to prevent goldfish from getting into these ponds. Um, what goes through your mind when when you when you get called to a job like this? Yeah, it's 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 difficult. Uh, so the the previous efforts that the town of Sylvan had, they probably spent a half a million dollars already with their efforts to date, trying to get rid of this. And this is just simply someone has released their aquarium uh, goldfish into this water body. So when when they first encountered it last year, they were actually worried that it might have been uh, Prussian carp, uh, another problem fish that we have in this province. Uh, but it was just found to be invasive goldfish. So somebody has. Uh, dumped their uh, aquarium in here thinking that that would be a good place for these fish to to spend the rest of their lives and it's we've really got to do a better job uh, all of us have got to do a better job with making sure that people understand that that's you know illegal it's really harmful to the environment these goldfish uh, basically can reproduce uh, asexually and they have at least two generations to their life cycle in a year so they can put out hundreds of thousands of eggs and be establishing a huge population in a very short period of time. So uh, they're competing for the same resources as our native fish. So we're lucky that this pond isn't directly connected to Sylvan Lake. There's a bunch, I mean, it is in, in the hydrological sense, but this pond goes into another pond, goes into another water course, which eventually makes its way down to Marina Bay at Sylvan Lake. So we've got the opportunity to block this, isolate this pond, block it off and be able to treat it. So that's one, one kind of blessing uh, in terms of our treatment here and, and why the province was okay with us treating it with this method. I, I guess uh, not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, the fact that these fish can lay all of these eggs, is there any worry that these eggs could have floated through the the intakes, the outtakes, and, and just by step by step by step, um, so I guess my question is, is there any, any monitoring that you're aware of um, in Sylvan Lake itself for these invasive goldfish? I believe, I, I don't know offhand. I know I'm, I'm not behind doing some of that work, but when I talked to the Environmental Services Coordinator this morning, we had talked about doing some more intensive eDNA work. They've got 13 other ponds like this at Sylvan. So we certainly wanna be doing some, at least some eDNA work, if not some electroshocking work to see if there are impacts elsewhere. And then the intergenerational question, that's a great question as well, because uh, typically you don't just do one treatment of rope known on a system like this, that will kill all the uh, fish that aren't eggs. But like you said, if there's some fresh eggs in here, we need to do a treatment again. So usually when we do these treatments, we do treat two treatments back to back within a couple or three weeks of each other in the fall to make sure you catch those eggs. But in our situation, because it's later in the season, uh, it's best to do the follow up. The second treatment to this will be done in the spring now. All right, Jay, we, we know you got a lot going on there. We'll let you get back at it. Uh, thanks for spending some time and bringing us up to uh, up to speed on really a, a serious issue, um, not just at Sylvan Lake, but in storm ponds right across Alberta. I know this is an ongoing thing and we've just got to get people, as you say, to kind of, um, yeah, I know the little kids want to see their fish swim away, but th th there are better ways to dispose of it, right? You can't release things live. So the province has a, a program called Don't Let It Loose. And there's a few other programs on the Aquatic Invasive Species webpage you'll find for the province with some other good information on it. Uh, but we've even found things like Northern Snakehead in some of our, our uh, ponds. I know that uh, Melissa Logan at the town of St. Albert, the city of St. Albert has been very busy treating their ponds pretty regularly. I know that uh, the, the, the applicator that we have here today has been busy with city of Edmonton storm ponds. So he's just coming off of doing treatments for them last week as well. So he's been you know run off his feet doing stormwater applications. And like you said, off the top, there's not many people that are qualified to use this chemical or have been trained to use this chemical. So uh, it's a bit of a niche, but it's uh, incredibly important that we, that we get the message out that it is not acceptable to release pet fish, aquarium fish, feeder fish, uh, do fish relocations, take fish from the river and put them into a pond. Uh, all of those introductions are illegal and, and not allowed under our, our Fisheries Act. So we want to make sure we aren't we aren't polluting our watercourses, thinking that we're doing a good thing.
All right, Jay, we'll let you get back at it. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate your time.